the first thing that I want you to think about, I want you to think about the mechanics of your body. So what I do not do and what I do not want to see you do is tape your paper down because that limits. If I want to draw a straight line across the center of this page, I'm not going to draw it with the page sitting perpendicular to me and sitting just like it is. I, my natural motion, and this is what I want you guys to try and do and think about, I want you to divide your paper in half, the lengthwise, so this is 14 inches, so approximately seven inches, what I want you to do. Now watch before you do this. I want you to draw a quick and fairly light, I want you to apply very little pressure, but I just want you to divide this paper in half and draw a quick, less than one second line. Uh, a lot of things that you'll also see me do over time is I'll ghost in. I'm not putting any pressure. I'm just looking to see if this is the right angle and this is where I want to draw it. So I'm just going to draw a straight line. Now what you'll notice is look at that angle, right? Here's my page. My angle, I measured it for the first time not too long ago and it sits right about 45 degrees. 45 degrees is the angle with which I feel most comfortable drawing a straight line. So what I want you to do, draw a straight line. You can draw multiple times. Just draw a straight line, keep drawing a straight line, cutting your paper in half. And I want you to take up, notice the timing. The timing is, if you can watch that second counter up there, it's probably less than a second. Let's see, 46, 47. Somewhere about a second it takes me to draw that. Um, some people draw a lot slower. Again, I'm asking you to try my technique. If you end up drawing, you know, better than Michelangelo by leaving your page sitting like this and just drawing like so, my wife draws like that and she's fantastic. If you end up doing that, that's great. But right now I want you to try my technique. Okay. Straight line. So why is that important and this is where this is where it might get a little challenging for you but i want you to think about that sketch gesture that that one line how many of you play golf does anybody in here play golf okay so in golf you try and duplicate the same stroke and then you just change the clubs and they're longer they'll go further there's more loft They'll go higher and not quite as far. But you essentially repeat the same stroke over and over again, and then you just use a different tool. Well, all we're gonna do is we're gonna, we're gonna try and develop, and I want you to even think about it like developing a sport, uh, a skill in a sport. We're gonna practice getting that sketch gesture down, and then what we're gonna do is we're ultimately gonna change the orientation of our paper and repeat that gesture and so all I'm doing is I'm repeating this and I'm repeating this. And then if I put this in the right place for straight lines, it all works out. So here, now we're going to do our first test of proportion. I want you to take the right side of this page that we just divided in half, and I want you to try and draw a square. So it's going to be somewhere around a, an approximate um, seven inch square. And so again, notice that I, my, my page is now rotated 90 degrees from where it was a moment ago. And I'm just going to start here. I'm going to draw a straight line. So I'm trying to get a square proportion here, which will leave something other than a square down here. And that's fine. When we talk about proportions, the easiest thing to see is a circle and a square. The easiest thing to do is to divide a length or a space in half. So what I want to do now is I want to divide this into four, four areas. And so to divide it into four, I'm not just going to start and draw here and hope that's one fourth. I'm going to divide it in half first. So I'm even going to put a little dot right there, straight line. Then I'm going to divide this in half, straight line, divide this in half, straight line. Look at the 
space that you're dividing. It, for me, it's a little bit about not really peripheral vision, but it's about not following the tip of the pen, but getting a feel for the line and where it needs to go in that estimated space. So if you can look at that square as you're drawing the line and not focus on the line, but look at the square, it's going to help you better estimate where half is in that square, I think. At least in the way that I think it does. So, so instead of looking at the pen tip, you're kind of focusing it. You're not even focusing, maybe. Yeah. It's almost like a, a, a general feel of that space and cutting that space in half. Okay, so a couple of things that I want you to notice. Here's, here's as far as we've gone, right? My space is not perfect. My lines are not perfectly straight. I actually... Um, I've drawn at least two lines for every line that I have here because I'm correcting it. The other thing I want you to notice is that it's not very dark, right? So this is maybe, I don't know, 30% of how dark I can draw with this pen. Um, the last thing that I want you to think about, and I want you to go over each of these lines one more time. I want you to think about the parts of your body that you're using. And I'll tell you what, what I, 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 ex, I open my shoulder a little bit. Most of the action is taking place with my elbow. It's kind of extending. And my wrist, if you look at my wrist, it's the, the relationship of my hand to the line, the angular relationship, I try and keep that about the same. So you'll notice my wrist is kind of it's torquing just a little bit as I move up. But I want you to think about that, and I just want you to go over each of these lines again and think about the parts of your body that you're using. The good news here is that the straight line is really one of the more difficult things. Circles are tough, ellipses are tough, but a straight line's a lot easier, or a lot more difficult than an arc, and we'll talk about that in a minute. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're going to just practice hatching. So we're going to work on the same gesture, but now what we're focusing on is start and stop. I'm only moving, this looks like it's about, I don't know, an inch and three quarters. Start and stop, start and stop, just a bunch of parallel lines about an eighth of an inch apart. Hold on, because I, I want you to do this. I want you to, I want you to draw them as light as you possibly can. An eighth of an inch apart. Now what you'll notice, Watch me do about six of these before you get started. Because I've got my page just like, you know, it's somewhere in here. This is like my optimal place. This is my optimal angle, 45 degrees. After I do three or four of these, then you'll see my page just kind of starts to shift up. Shift up. But I'm trying to essentially just reproduce that same sketch gesture and I'm drawing it very lightly, right? So I want you to practice drawing as light as you can while it still lays ink down across that entire inch and three quarter span. And then just fill in this one block right here. Just to give you some reference, here's a dark line, right? That's, that's dark. I want you to go really light. And I want you to try and be even, try and keep those lines parallel, try and keep, this, keep the spacing even. And then also you're concentrating on where you're starting and stopping. Try and let it stop along that line. And of course that line is not perfectly defined, right? So this is one of those major differences between what we're doing now and what we will do in the future. Um, and so most of what we're doing right now is really kind of about, uh, it's more about technique. This would be the type of lines we would put down for construction. Uh, and we'll talk more about that in a minute. Okay, so now what I want you to do is I want you to start same thing. Let's apply just a little bit more pressure, but I want you to start a little bit further apart. 
But then as we move down each line, I want you to put just a little bit closer. We're not measuring, we're just guessing. Each line I want you to put a little bit closer so that towards the bottom, they're gonna be pretty close together. So we kind of have created a, a gradient there, right? Um, so there are lots of different terms for this, but essentially this is hatching, right? I'll tell you a story, a fun story in a minute about hatching. But now what I want you to do, let's create, so you can see it's lighter here and it's darker here. I want to create a very similar gradient in this panel, but what I want to do is I actually want to do it simply by applying less pressure and gradually more pressure, and I want the same spacing, so it would be the same spacing here, but let's try and get a similar gradient. So I'm going to start light, move down an inch, or an eighth of an inch. I'm keeping this really light, but as I move down this column, I'm going to change the gradient simply by applying more pressure to each pin stroke. I can cheat. I can I can just put this hot spot from my lamp up top and it looks like it's a better gradient than it really is. But just by so those are the two ways we can change value, right? And we aren't going to do a whole lot of shading in this section, but I do want you to kind of know that's if I have something like a flare tip pin, which it's more difficult to change the value the weight of each pin stroke and I want to create some kind of gradient, I'll use this method. If I've got a ballpoint pin, I might use a combination of these two. Okay, so those were short, short gestures, right? Let's rotate our page to find the optimal angle to draw a line 90 degrees from where we were. And now I just want you to fill this last little cell here with long, maybe one-eighth of an inch, separating them, long strokes. I think the challenge when you do the longer strokes, actually some of the shorter strokes are this way too, but the challenge is really, even when you get to where you're drawing from your shoulder and elbow and not so much from your wrist, keeping your wrist it still can be really hard to not have slight arcs. You know, your, your sweeping motion, even of your shoulder and, and elbow, tend to create kind of slight arcs instead of straight lines. Yeah, I can tell you which way I drew these because there is a slight arc across that longer line right there. And sp speaking of arcs, now what I want you to do in this space down here, look at me real quick. The, the meat of your elbow, I want you to think about that as the center point of a compass. And lay down your arm, and I want you to essentially, my forearm becomes a radius, and I just want you to draw what might be a natural arc for you. Let's do, let's do maybe 10 or so of those pretty close together where 
I'm controlling that because that's that's my natural arc. And you know, I've been saying this, I have never gone back to look at drawings from the past. Uh, but my guess is that this arc shows up in my designs all the time because it's simple, it's natural for me. If I'm not drawing a straight line and I'm putting a slight arc on something, I bet that shows up. Okay, so now let's put a little bit more space and let's vary, just vary the weight. Let's put a little bit more space. And then the other thing I want you to do, as you move down, I want you to introduce, so this I'm, I'm pretty static, right? So, I mean, my elbow's, my elbow's moving a little bit, but my goal here is that most everything is coming from just this natural feel. Um, as you begin to move down here, I want you to introduce more wrist. If I want to make a tighter arc, I got the same motion, but I'm just going to add a little bit more wrist. And if I need a tighter arc than that, I've got to add a lot more wrist, right? So think about that. And by the way, the other thing, and again, this is, this is just, it's what works for me. I always draw from the inside out away from my body some people excuse me some people draw in uh, some people like to draw straight lines like this that is not me like this and like this this seems like the most awkward way to do it you know I guess just ghost those different motions and then you know hopefully you'll see what we mean by finding that natural arc all right, so in between, just pick two of these things. In between there, let's just hatch across once again. Um, most people do not think about drawing as a physical activity, right? It's, it's certainly not cardio. Um, but uh, it is something that you know what if your body is in good shape and you're awake and you go through maybe a little warm up exercise like this you're probably going to perform better uh, when I say it's not an exercise I remember when the first like Nike fuel band came out uh, and I wore it on this wrist I got tons of credit when I sketched, right? Because it was like just testing that motion. Okay, so those are straight lines and arcs and we'll do more of that, but the big takeaway that I want you to take from that is find that optimal angle. Think about how your body relates to the page and optimize it, you know, make it as easy as possible for you. Okay, so Let's go to the far other side of the page. And again, I want you to draw a straight line. I'm gonna ghost it in. I'm leaving about an inch and, inch and a quarter, two inches, inch and three quarters, two inches. I'm just gonna draw a straight line. Notice I drew two. Um, again, it's not perfect. Now, we're gonna draw circles and ellipses. So, um, we're gonna start with a circle, but what I want you to know is look at this line. I'm going to use this line and I'm going to draw these circles and ellipses and I'm going to cut them in half with this line. And what I mean by that, I'm going to draw a circle up here and I want you to do it. One other thing, I'm not putting my pen down. I talked about ghosting in. I always do it with circles and ellipses. But I'm just going to try and draw a circle and I, a circle that is bisected by the line that I've already drawn. And what I mean by bisected is it's cutting, it's, it's cutting it in half. So I'm just gonna hatch over here. You don't have to do that. But it's cutting that circle in half. Notice also, I've got one, two, three, four revolutions that made that circle somewhat close to a circle. The first one wasn't perfect, I went over it again. And ultimately now the median, the, the, the happy medium of those lines that I put together makes it look kind of like a circle. Um, so now ellipses. So up until now you've worked with a, an isometric ellipse, which is about 30, 
what is it, 35 degrees, 16 minutes, or is it 36, 15, something like that? Have you talked about the minor axis at all? I want you to label this line. This line is the minor axis. And so I want you to draw a series of ellipses. They don't have to be perfect. I want you to draw some that are fat, and I want you to just draw some that are skinny. I'm going to start with a skinny one. This one's probably about 15 degrees. But I also want you to draw it so that that original line is bisecting it. And bisecting it across the shorter distance. So across this way, not that way. I'm going to draw one that is incorrect for what I'm trying to teach you. And notice how I just rotated my page 90 degrees. When I draw an ellipse, the width of my ellipse, kind of the wider portion, sits at the same angle that my optimal line does. So if I draw another ellipse right here, I'm going to make this one probably about a 35, that's maybe about 25 degree ellipse. This, I want you to put a big old no and an exclamation point. Now that, it's not going to make a lot of sense right now, but when we teach you about ellipses, the minor axis is super important, and that's this line. And that minor axis is going to be the same for each of our ellipses, except for this one. This one is done incorrectly. So, no. The minor axis on an ellipse cuts it in half, it bisects it, across the shorter distance. Okay? So let's do a larger ellipse. I mean, a fatter one, a larger degree. Those are difficult for me. You can see I went over that probably six or seven times. Let's go back to a thin one. Let's go real thin. Okay, let's go small. But notice how all these are, they're in line and they share the same line that is the minor axis. And that's gonna be important for what we do next. Does everybody kind of get what I'm doing with the pen? Like, I, I ghosted in for these ellipses, and then I slowly let my pen down. And so it's still pretty light. And so if I was drawing an object, this becomes construction for my object, and either A, I can come back in with an ellipse template later, or I can just slow, slow my pen down now that I know that I've got it constructed correctly to create that object line. Okay, so in this blank space now, I just want you to draw maybe two to three inch lines at different angles. And again, notice what's happening with my page. I'm just simply, I'm rotating it a little bit. And I'm drawing lines just at different angles. Try to do one, two, three, four, five, six, six or seven lines, just light lines. Okay, now those lines, those are our new minor axes for some new ellipses that we're going to draw. We're not going to get too deep into the ellipses, but with this exercise and this warm-up, I want you thinking about it already. So I'm going to draw an ellipse on this line. That's its minor axis. So again, what I'm going to try and do, I'm looking at that line, and I'm going to draw an ellipse. I'm going to draw two ellipses on each of these lines. I'm going to draw an ellipse that is cut in half, bisected by that original line. I'm gonna draw another one. So I'm gonna try and do it about the same degree, which means that it's about the same width to uh, length relationship. And I'm gonna do that for each of these. So just do some varying degrees of ellipses and just do two on each line. And think about the angle. Again, my optimal my optimal um, line angle for me and my body is like this, which when I'm going, I'm drawing an ellipse on this minor axis right here. Uh, 
I try and set up to where that minor axis is perpendicular to my optimal sketching angle. Maybe draw a circle, try and draw a circle on maybe one of these. Um, as far as body mechanics are concerned, this one is m one of the more complicated ones, right? So if you think about what's happening is my, my elbow is going out and then it's coming back in. My shoulder's going out and it's coming back in with each of these little revolutions of this ellipse. My wrist is fairly stable. I'm not doing much with my lips. I mean, my wrist. All right, look at your neighbor and see if they're using the minor axis correctly. Are they cutting those ellipses in half across the short distance? Okay, so let's go ahead and do this. Um, this one's a little weird because it's really more about technique and we're not drawing anything. I want you to put your name, let's say that this is the correct orientation. I want you to put your name with legible handwriting. And I want you to call this, this is FRE01. F-R-E-O-1. F-R-E-0-1. 